So if we were to ask the question, why does, I would say, the majority of the scientific community, and of course you would be an exception, there are many, many, many exceptions, but why does the majority of the scientific community believe that, let's say, the rocks are billions of years old? Well, basically it's a spiritual issue okay. because uh, there are those who have decided that we don't need God, we can explain everything you know, we reject God's word. We can explain everything in terms of, of slow processes over millions of years. And so it becomes a consequence of a prior choice to reject God's word. Uh, as you well know, as well as I do in Romans chapter one, it tells us that the evidence for God's existence is powerfully there in, in the world that he's created. Even his eternal power and Godhead is evident in the things that he's made. But men suppress the truth in unrighteousness. And the apostle Peter takes up that same theme in second Peter chapter three, where he says that the scoffers will be deliberately ignorant. They will willing, willfully ignorant. They will deliberately reject the evidence for creation, the flood, and they will scoff at the second and coming. So it's, it's sadly, I mean, the reason I say it's a spiritual issue, as you know, we're all looking at the same rocks, the same fossils. Yeah. The millions of years are an interpretation of those rocks and fossils. And it's a choice to explain the world without the need for God. Some of your geology colleagues, though, are saying, but we know that we can measure the radiometric uh, decay of some of these particles and the rocks measure out billions of years old. Well, you have to understand that they first of all do a chemical analysis. Okay. And those chemical analyses are fine. You know, it tells you how many atoms of different elements are in the rocks, but that's all it tells you. Oh. You've got to impose on the rocks on that chemical analysis an interpretation which is, has assumptions. Uh -huh. There are assumptions involved and those assumptions are critical. Be because there are assumptions about the past, none of us were there in the past, we can only test the present, we can test the rate of decay in, in the present, but we have to assume it's always been the same rate in the past. Now, is that assumption correct? That's the big question. Okay. And there's, there's ways to show that those assumptions are not correct, they're not provable. Uh, we weren't there in the past, and we, in fact, we see evidence that they're not correct. Radiometric dating is probably the key that is, is. used to try to determine a, a billions of years history of Earth's past. But if we were to look at all of the dating methods as a whole, as a collective, uh, you say that the majority? Yes. It's, uh, one of my colleagues, Dr. Russ Humphreys, once sat down and collated all the different methods that have been used. Yeah. And he found that over 90% of them gave a young age for the earth. Okay. But you have to remember, Dave, David, that the issue is that we all make assumptions. We cannot scientifically date the earth ultimately because we're always making assumptions about what the earth like was to begin with in the past, about the rates of decay, et cetera, et cetera. And so our only way is the birth certificate for the earth giving us into the Bible. We have it. The eyewitness account it's the birth certificate. God tells us when he did it. He tells you how, how he did it. And that's what you and I, we can prove how old we are by handing over our birth certificate. And the Bible is God's birth certificate for the He's earth. He's given us his birth certificate. Let's touch on several issues very quickly. Let's talk about Earth's geomagnetic field. Yes, the Earth has a magnetic field. That's why a compass points north. Uh, it's generated by electrical currents inside the Earth in its core. And uh, it's been discovered there's actually historical measurements around the globe that the, earth, the strength of the Earth's magnetic field has been decaying with time. Okay. And if we project that backwards, okay, it's an assumption, yeah. but it's a reasonable assumption. And it's a whole Earth process. If we project that back in time, the Earth's magnetic field would have been stronger and stronger and stronger back in the past. Makes sense. But it gets to the point where it's so strong, it'd be that of a magnetic star, which we couldn't, life wouldn't <laughs> exist on. So there is an upper limit to how far you can stretch it back. And some say only as little as 10,000 years and the Earth would be as strong as a magnetic far star. So that seems to limit the, the upper limit for the age of the Earth. Okay. All right, so this is one that seems to be pointing towards a younger Earth. age of the Another Earth. Another one is the salt in the sea. Okay. I mean, rivers bring salt down. You can measure the salt in rivers and you can measure how much salt in the ocean. So you do the math and you find for the most generous assumptions, you know, it would take say 60 million years to get all the salt from fresh water in the ocean to salt in the ocean, the saltiness of the ocean now. And yet the oceans are supposed to have been there for 3 billion or more years, the geologists say. 
And the answer to that is, well, it can't have been. And let's remember that uh, God may not have started with us, may not have started with a freshwater ocean because he made freshwater, uh, saltwater fish as well as freshwater fish. And during the flood, there would have been much more salt added very quickly. That's true. It would have so been it condenses, the, and... but still it gives an upper limit for the age of the earth and its oceans. An upper limit of millions at the most. At the very most. With when the most they generous... need billions. Correct. Okay. All right. If we were to look at fossils for a second, if we, if we looked at the C14 mm-hmm. that we find, the carbon radiocarbon, 14, yes. How does that work? Well, if every atom of the earth was made up of radiocarbon, yeah. radiocarbon decays so rapidly that after a million years, there'd be no radiocarbon left. Okay. And therefore, geologists don't date dinosaur bones with radiocarbon because they believe they're 65 plus million years old. Okay. They believe that coal coming out of West Virginia is over 300 million years old, so they don't expect to find radiocarbon in it. But the amazing thing is, David, that every sample of coal limestone, different fossils, oil, natural gas that's been tested for radiocarbon has radiocarbon in it. So that indicates that those things can't be millions of years old, even deep earth diamonds. (laughs) Diamonds, by the way, that haven't been in contact with the earth's atmosphere because radiocarbon is produced in the atmosphere. So if you've got radiocarbon in diamonds, that means it's intrinsic to the origin of the Earth itself. And radiocarbon in diamonds means they're only thousands of years old, so the Earth is only thousands of years old. So C14 is actually a, yeah, and a, a pe- friend. People, yeah, and people say, but wait a minute, couldn't it come from contamination? Right. No, that's, we can rule that out. Some say, well, couldn't it can come from uranium in coal that produces neutrons that turns nitrogen? No, you can't get the levels of carbon-14 that we find in coal as a result of uranium bombardment of nitrogen atoms in coal. Okay. All right. So that's another one. We looked at salt. We looked at the magnetic field. We looked at C14. What about graves? Well, that's right. You think about it. If, if man has been on the earth for a million years, look at all the people that should have lived and died. Why do we find so few graves and few human remains? It's because human history isn't that long. Even written history isn't okay. that long. Agriculture hasn't been. You mean to say through over 100,000 years of the Stone Age, they didn't figure out how to put a seed in the ground and grow a crop? No, <laughs> not at all. The, the advent of agriculture goes back to the earliest uh, human civilization. And the Bible says Noah planted a vineyard after the ark anyway. That's right. So uh, that, the age of agriculture gives you the age back to the time of the flood with that, uh, Noah in the ark. All right. So if we were looking at this from an evolutionary assumption and we were trying to talk about the advent of agriculture, let's say, uh, it's really having to jump through hoops to try to get an old oh, earth. You have to stretch it. You have to. Okay. And, and uh, sadly, most of the evolutionists don't look at those issues. They just blithely say, well, we know that the Earth is millions yeah. of years old, so they don't confront these dilemmas. What we've seen is that whether it's graves or ag- agriculture or written history or uh, the magnetic field decay, uh, literally over 90 percent of yes. the dating methods that we could possibly come up with, when you take them and calculate them, and you're using assumptions, obviously. That's right. It comes out to a young age for the universe. There's, say, 10% that maybe seem to indicate an ancient age for the Earth, but again, they're using assumptions as well. Exactly. And that's why we say there's no true scientific method that will give you an absolute number for the age of the Earth because of the assumptions. The only true age for the Earth we get from the birth certificate from the eyewitness, eyewitness that was there got himself in the Scriptures. Astounding.